Do you find that your background in, in terms of having three distinctive cultural uh, uh, identities, do you find that, that that has influenced your music in a specific way? Totally. I mean, um, I always write as a European. I mean, my, my musical vocabulary is very, I don't know, mid-19th century European. Um, th th those are the harmonies that I like. Um, you know, I grew up with Mozart and Beethoven and all them German guys, <laughs> and Austrians. <coughs> um, and then, you know, I England. England was important in so far that on the continent people don't really know Elgar and Holst that well. So, you know, being exposed to well, Benjamin Britten, even though he wrote a lot in Germany. Um, so, so yes, absolutely. And then, and then the whole rock and roll thing. You know, the rock and roll thing was. And and there the weird thing was that that I really enjoyed what German bands were doing. You know, like Neu and Kraftwerk and Can and Tangerine Dream and you know all the, all those people who were, in a funny way, taking the idea of rock and roll and making it into something else and being really experimental with it. You know, and I don't think you would have a Radiohead if you didn't have a can at one point. Um, and vice versa. I mean, it's, it's like it's like the blues, you know. I mean, without the Rolling Stones and Eric Clapton, you know, America would have less of a insight into its own music. That makes sense. Would Would you say that that influenced you in terms of your timbral choices and uh, synthesis, or? Well, the, okay. Who influenced? Uh, that's actually a really interesting question because. Actually, nobody's ever asked me that, <laughs> and people have asked me a lot of the same stuff. Um, who are the people that really influenced me? Uh, you know, obviously Kraftwerk, because I, I remember when we were, you know, when Trevor Horn and I worked together, we we used to go and sit there and put Man Machine on every morning in the studio and just listen to it and go, hmm, you know, how, how did they do it? But I know how they did it. You know, it's not that hard, but it was, you know, they were very, they had a particular aesthetic choice, you know, and um, I loved what Tomita did. You know, I, I just thought it was, I thought it was magic, and I thought it was magic that you could go that far away from um, trying to imitate, you know, synthesizers at first were just, you know, imitative devices, yeah. as opposed to something, um, you know, and, and him working like an impressionist painter, really, I thought was, Fantastic! It um, takes switch on Bach to a whole other level. Yes, and and you know, and why did I get into it? Like I think most other people, because somebody dragged and switched on Bach, you know. And I don't think there is a synthesis alive, or certainly of my generation, who who di who can't tell you the same story. It's it's the same story. We heard that record, and we knew knew it was n not just the future, but it was the future for us. Speaking of the future, and where do you see synthesis headed now? Are there are you do you have favorite plugins that you use? I understand you use the Zebra plugin on uh, Batman. I, I, I and Inception. In fact, I've I've I started. All right, this is this is you know because I still have a big modular Moog modular system or Moog. You know, <laughs> I mean, my, um, and without saying anything bad about anything, but you know, and and then of course it's a, it's sort of a pain. Because you know it doesn't have recall. You know it needs a good kicking every once in a while because it's forty something years old, um, and so when the Arturia thing came out, the Arturia modular plugin, I, I I just thought that was the greatest thing ever. Except you know it takes a long time to make a really good satisfying noise, um, and I couldn't. And I, I would spend the same amount of time not quite getting there and uh, that, that I would spend on the on the big thing, you know, with the real knobs and the real yeah. leads and actually getting there. So so I started to become really conscious of what, what I, I think is sort of the inherent quality of some of those systems. You know, all that voodoo everybody talks about, you know, and... And I don't think it's analog and digital. I think they're just some um, plugins that inherently have a quality of sound that ultimately, you know, when you spend the amount of time actually crafting a sound, um, 
you, yeah, you're going to, you, it, you know, it's it's got balls, and you're going to be satisfied with the thing. Um, and Zebra was one of the one of the few things which I really felt had an inherent quality to the sound. And so the other thing, because there's so much of so much stuff out there, I started limiting myself now and just trying to get really good at certain things and really just like a violinist will become very good at playing the violin I wanted to get really good at playing you know designing sounds on zebra um, and I had I actually had a lot of help because I, I phoned us before we started on Dark Knight and said us Heckman who is the designer and I, I, I said to us you know look this is really great but you know, I can either go and make sounds or I can write notes, and I think I have to write notes. So do you know anybody who can help me and just come over and be, be a programmer with me? Um, and he sent over this guy, Howard Scar, and, um, you know, I think Howie and I started off really sort of badly, you know, whereby I was forever... You know, he would do something and I couldn't, I just couldn't keep my fingers off it, you know, and I was forever interfering and, you know, I thought he was arrogant and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, we were sort of moseying along, not really getting somewhere. And then one day he, he did a sound and it, it, it used the most minuscule amounts of components and it was so great. And I just went, wow, you know, I'd... I didn't know how he did that, and you know, and, and that's a, that's a great moment when yeah. when somebody just knocks your socks off doing something, you know, and and I and I, I just had to understand, you know, I had never worked with somebody else who designed, you know, who, who was a synthesis or designed sounds because I I was always the guy doing it, you know, so I was obviously being really obnoxious about the whole thing, but so so how he worked on Dark Knight, um, and really honestly, we you know we do things together. And it, we found a really good way of working together. He worked on Dark Knight, he worked on Da Vinci Code. Um, and Inception, I mean, Inception really is an electronic score that has a little bit of orchestra in it. Um, so, but it, it's 99% Zebra. Um, I haven't run out of things I can do on that thing yet. 